is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The gospel of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for this Palm Sunday as we wave our branches and we shout Hosanna along with all those who welcomed you as you journeyed into Israel. Help us to journey lifting our joyful Hosannas. And be with us as we continue to journey with you throughout this holy week as we walk with you through the journey of your passion and your death as we turn our eyes toward
toward your cross and journey towards the glory and wonder of your Easter. We pray this, trusting in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and actually, at our rote, I was going to sit down. We're going to do our welcome and announcements. Welcome to St. Mark's. Uh, one quick announcement, if you're watching with us online, it's good to have you here with us this morning, uh, and thank you all for being here in person. Uh, one announcement from me this morning. After our meeting in between services today, uh, if you have a middle or high school youth, uh, come find me. April 16th, we have a fundraiser for our youth gathering coming up next summer in New Orleans that I just want us to touch base on that. And then to celebrate a fundraiser, that afternoon we're going to Carowinds. So um, make sure you stop by and see me or Gene um, or Jessica, who is also here, one of us that we can kind of clue you in uh, about what's going on on the 16th. With that, uh, Shelby Westmoreland um, would like to share a story with us. Good morning. Lately, I've been thinking a lot about Easter baskets. Many of you have shared the joy you had of putting together a basket or buying goodies for one during our recent Easter basket drive. And this made me wonder when, where, and why we celebrate with Easter baskets. So I did what we often do these days. I Googled. Easter baskets were used to carry the food for a large feast, which symbolized the end of Lent. It was not chocolate or jelly beans, but it was bread, meat, and vegetables, a basket full that would be blessed at church and served on Easter Sunday to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Easter baskets filled with treats originated from this early tradition. We delivered our Easter baskets last Tuesday. 158 baskets went up the mountain. 14 baskets will go to the children's home in Cherokee that's on the reservation. Eight baskets will go to the Methodist children's home for at-risk children. Many baskets will go to children in Swain and Haywood County and the children of Living Waters Lutheran Church. I hope you can imagine the joy and celebration when these children receive their baskets on Easter Monday morning. We would like to thank you, the congregation, for this special gift of love to these special children. Without your generosity, <coughs> it would not have happened. Thank you. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I, will, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Word of God, word of life.
A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the God, uh, to the glory of God the Father. Word of life, or word of God, word of life. Oh, man. Come on up. Have a seat in the church. Here, actually, y'all can sit on the steps and I'll sit down where I can see your faces. Hosanna. Okay, so that was the Eeyore version of Hosanna. Hosanna. Let's try this again and channel our inner Tigger. Hosanna! Hosanna! Much better. Hey, so last night I was watching basketball on television, and there were these men and women sitting on the sidelines, and they had things like this in their hands. Do you know what this is? What is this called? A pom-pom. A pom-pom. What do you think um, those folks are called cheerleaders? What do you think that those cheerleaders... Why were they shaking pom-poms? Yeah. Because it was halftime, absolutely. Oh, what? And I love Perfect. Good stuff. So cheerleaders, what do you think they do for their teams? It's in their name. Cheer. They cheer. Good job, Sarah Grace. So in the gospel story that we heard today, there are this huge crowd of cheerleaders that welcome Jesus as he comes into Jerusalem, and they shout this word, Hosanna! Yeah, Yeah, let's try that again. Hosanna! Very good. Hosanna means joy, or yay, or I'm going to teach you a little cheer. Go, Jesus, go. Can you do that? Go, Jesus, go. Very good. Hosanna. Go, Jesus, go. Very good. So you kind of had your own pom-poms when you came into church today. You had palm branches, not the palms of your hands. You did have the palms of your hands, but you also had palm branches. And you waved that palm branch as you came in, just like you would wave a pom-pom. And you waving that palm branch was you participating in shouting, Go, Jesus, go. We're going to hear this week, Jesus is going to go a lot of places. Jesus is going to go into Jerusalem, then he's going to go to a friend's house, and he's going to have dinner with the disciples. He's going to have communion with them, and we'll have communion together in just a little bit. Um, Then Jesus is going to go to a cross, and Jesus is going to die on that cross, and we're going to hear that story, um, at least in part today, too. Yeah, that's a sad thing, but then Jesus is going to go, yeah, then Jesus is going to go to a tomb, but Next Sunday, Easter, something special is going to happen. There you go. The spoiler alert straight from Vivian's mouth. And we will talk more about that. She's fine. She's fine. It is Good Friday. That's exactly right. You may be a preacher one day if you keep up like that. So... Let's say a prayer real quick and repeat after me. Hosanna. Thank you, God, for the joy of this day. Thank you, God, that we get to journey with you this holy week. Help us to always shout Hosanna and to go with Jesus go. And to follow and to share his love always. Amen.
Thank you all for coming up this morning. When we sing today, get your um, pom-poms, your palm pom-poms, and wave them high. And tell other people to wave it around. Because today is a day of celebration. You can get back in your seats. Before the gospel reading, a couple of things. One, you'll be standing up for a few minutes, so feel free to sit down if you need to sit down during our gospel reading uh, up until communion. Uh, secondly, uh, the palm branches, your pom-poms, if you so desire, when you come forward for communion, you're welcome to drop them in the aisle, and we will walk over them. They dropped palm branches and other leafy greens and other coats and garments in front of Jesus when he rode into Jerusalem that Sunday. So feel free to drop those in the aisle or feel free to hang on to them, take them home with you and uh, leave them up for the whole year someplace in your home. And, and pray every time you see that palm branch, wherever it may be in your house. Uh, thirdly, the, the message before this gospel reading, there's no sermon today, but here it is. And just to mention that in as we turn the page to the top of the next page, you'll see some bold printed words near the top of the page saying, it won't be me, Lord, not I, surely not me. We're putting those words in our mouth. Those are the words of Judas. Judas who is receiving 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus, or perhaps the Greek word paradidomi is more likely the word deliver, like Shelby mentioned earlier, that they delivered 151 Easter baskets. But that's too nice a word, deliver. It's almost too nice a word to say betray. It means to step back and, and not be there for a friend. The word is, is more aggressive. It is handing over. It is receiving the 30 pieces of silver with one hand and handing over Jesus with the other hand. And it's a reminder of the gods in our lives as well as this whole passion story. The gods of our lives, whether it be money, 30 pieces of silver, possessions and stuff. Whether it be, I think I know better than Jesus and the God of myself. Whether it be the God of violence, later on there's going to be violence in this story. Whether it be the God of political power as Pontius Pilate yields political power in this story. Various gods exist, and you may see more as we read this. But the reminder here this day, even though Jesus knows that Judas is getting ready to hand him over, Jesus also knows that he has been handed over by God for us, 
for our sinfulness, for all the ways in which we betray God, for all the, which in way, all the ways in which we hand over Jesus to say, Jesus, not today, I'm going to do it myself. Or Jesus, not today, I'm going to take care of my own money. Or Jesus, not today, I'm going to trust in political power or violence or something else. We hand over Jesus in many and various ways, and yet at the same time, Jesus still gathers with Judas and all the disciples who participate in this handing over. And Jesus at the meal reminds them that the body and blood, his own self, is being handed to them for the forgiveness of their sins. Today, you will receive Jesus' body and blood handed over to you for the forgiveness of your sins and mine as well. Thanks be to God for the true God in which we worship and the Son of God who came to live and even to die for us. The Holy Gospel of the Passion of this Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, chapters 26 and 27. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the courtyard of the high priest who was called Caiaphas, and they conspired to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. Now while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, and she poured it. She handed it over by pouring it onto his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, Why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. Jesus was aware of this their own greedy, selfish sinfulness, and said, Why do you trouble the woman? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. By pouring this ointment on my body, she has prepared me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. And then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening... Jesus took his place with the twelve disciples. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him, One after another, It won't be me, Lord, not I. I. Surely, Surely not, not me. me. Jesus answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one to not have been born. Judas, who betrayed Jesus, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. Then while they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread... And after blessing the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This, this is, is my, my body. body. Then Jesus took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink, Drink from, from it, all of you. you. 
for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. We pray as Jesus and the disciples prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated and then, feel, and then come forward to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion either around the rail kneeling or standing or perhaps uh, you will remain in your seat and we will come to you following everyone else communing up at the railing. Following communion, you are welcome to remain seated the rest of the worship service until the closing uh, end when we invite you to stand near the end.
they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even if all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to Peter, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to Jesus, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. Jesus took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples, and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, Jesus came and found the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. <coughs> then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Now the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. Look. My betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will die by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a rebel? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. 
The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What do you think? They answered, He deserves death. And then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. And a female servant came to him and said, You were also with that Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you were talking about. When he went out to the porch, another female servant saw him and said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, Peter denied it with an oath. I do not know this man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said to him. Peter, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly.
When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord commanded. Now Jesus stood before the governor, And the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release of a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they, ga- after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of, his, out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let Let him him be crucified. crucified. Then he said, Why, what evil has he done? But they all shouted the more, Let him be crucified. crucified. Let Let him him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and he washed his hands of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood is on us and on our children. So Pilate released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they pressed it in on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene whose name was Simon. They compelled Simon to carry Jesus' cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the skull... They offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when Jesus tasted it, he would not drink it. 
And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over Jesus' head, they put a charge on him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The rebels who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again, and with a loud voice breathed his last.
At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those, who were with, and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were there also, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people, he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than, the, worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone.
Please stand as you're able. For all who die, die believing, die safely in thy love. With the centurion who professed who Jesus was, we also profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he will ascend at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us this day, forth, and forevermore. Amen. You're welcome to stick around for our congregational meeting at about 9.45. Uh, there's a time for a bathroom break, maybe a coffee break, and then hurry back if you, uh, are so, or if you so would. Otherwise, go in peace and serve in love. Thanks be to God.